Okay, today we're going to be doing categorical data or data, which is when we start putting everything together. All right, right here is where it talks about what we're going to be doing with the information. The frequency table is when it talks about the data in terms of the frequency or how many times each occurs. A relative frequency table is relative to the total numbers and then a percent bar graph shows the relative as uh, the frequency as part of a strip. Um, I do have to say that this is the one I've seen on a lot of practice stars, this percent bar graph, um, and there are some in here. So let's look at this part. Matthew took a survey in class to determine which season most students like the best. He displayed it in a frequency table. Notice it's telling you right there, we're looking at a table. Make a relative frequency table to show the data. Which season is the mode? My keyword for that one is most. So step one. So this is going to break down the steps and how to do this. Determine the number of data values in all. That's our total. If I were to add up the spring, summer, winter, and fall, I would get that there's a total of 25 students surveyed. All right, now, oops, I did want that moved. There we go. Now we need to term the relative frequency for each season. So what we're going to be doing here is some division. I'm going to be taking the number of the frequency and dividing it by the sum, which is 25. And then so here is 10 divided by 25, 2 divided by 25, and 5 divided by 25. All right, don't hate me, but I want you to pause it, do the math, and then check your answers because you should get a decimal number. Go for it. I mean it. Pause it. You too. Come on. Well, hopefully you did the math and you should get these numbers. Now, if I were to add these up just to double check, uh, remember when we add decimals, we align the decimals so that our place values are correct. When I align these up, it should equal one. And that should make sense because that's the total amount of people surveyed would be 100%, okay? But it should equal one in terms of decimal land. So when I do this, I do get one, which if it was a percent would be 100%. All right, so we're gonna complete the relative frequency table using that previous information. So here our total is 25, and here we've already proven that it equals 1. So spring is 0 0.32, or 32 hundredths. Uh, summer is 4 tenths. And quite honestly, I would be adding that 0 on. Um, fall is 8 hundredths. And then winter is 2 tenths, or it could be 20 hundredths, which I personally like doing that just because it makes it a little bit neater to read. So identify the mode. Which one had the most? Well, I think if you could look at it, you would see that the summer is it. All right, so we will fill that in, and now we'll go to the next set. Problem two. The table below shows the frequency of sandwiches sold in the cafeteria. Create a percent bar graph. Okay, guys, this is what I'm thinking you're going to see on star. That's my prediction anyway, um, to display the graph. So the first thing we have to do is find the total number. Another way we just say it is the sum of the responses. So we have 9, here's a 9, and 2. So it's 18 plus 2, 20. There are 20 responses. All right. So it says find the relative frequency, that means the frequency in terms of how many is asked, and write it as a percent. So Ham 
is 4 out of 20 equals 100%. So if you think about the way we've done it, we've done 4 out of 20 equals what out of 100? We cross multiply. Remember, it's because it's an equal sign. And we have 20 equals, 20x equals 400. Divide by 20. And we get x is equal to 20. So when we get that, that's 20%. So I'm going to do one more with these, and then I'm going to have you pause it and do it on your own. So I'm going to get a little bit more space there. So turkey is 5 out of 20, and we want to know what percent out of a 100 percent. So this is where we are going to cross multiply around that equal sign. We have 20x equals 500. Divide by 20 to isolate that variable. Those cancel each other out and I'm left with x. That 0 cancels out that 0. 2 will go into 50 25 times so it's 25 percent. And then our veggie, when we do it, will be pause it, do it, check it, 10%. All right, so here's step three. We're going to create a percent bar graph to show the data. We're going to label the axes, which are the x and the y, right here, to show what is being represented, the frequency is going to be the y, what's being represented is the x, um, we're going to have our title, and we're going to draw a bar on the first graph to represent the first category roast beef. So this represents right here roast beef. You can see they left it like that. Then they're going to draw a bar on top to represent ham. So as you can see, they went 20 there. 20%. By the way, I copied this from the other page just so we would have the information there. And now we need to finish it by stacking the last two on it. So we've done ham, we've done roast beef. So I'm going to do turkey next, which would be, that's about 25. I mean, that's about 5 and that should be 20 and so I'm going to shade that in a medium shade well maybe I should use something a little thicker for this there we go and then our last one will be the veggie, which is 10, which makes sense. That's 10 right there. And that one, I'll just shade in in blue. Try to, anyway. So when we're all said and done, this graph should reach 100% because it accounts for everything. But on some of the practice star stuff we've seen at trainings, it'll ask like how much is this amount or which one's larger, which would be this one. And so these type of bar graphs is something we are starting to see a lot of. All right. It is now time to begin the homework portion, and you're doing great. I'm proud of you. Bye.